Oh, I'm going for this. I am going to do a review on Six Feet Under. Despite the fact I'm actually not a big death metal fan. Hi people and hello my Chili Con Carnage crew, it's Chili here, the man who produces Iron From My Eyes, doing a five minute review on Six Feet Under's newest album, Killing For Revenge. Let's see how this goes. There is one important thing before I go into this record. We have to scan it and make sure there are no pig squeals on here. Scanning, scanning, scanning. Clean. That's good because otherwise this album would have instantly got a zero and would have been the worst album I've listened to this year. Yes, that's right. I am not a big death metal fan and I say it right up front because I want to be honest with you. At the end of the day, I think the genre sits very low on my list of music to listen to for metal. However, that being said, I don't think it is a terrible genre. I do listen to some songs, but I just don't find myself coming back to it very often. That being said, I had to go and listen to Six Feet Under because, well, it's just stirring up a lot of controversy at the moment, various reasons in particular particular to do with the lead singer Chris Barnes and everyone just seems to be targeting Chris Barnes at the moment. But is it justified or is it not? Here I am with fresh eyes just giving you what I think in regards to this album. So let's address the elephant in the room first of all and say yeah Chris Barnes' vocals, I'm going to make this very simple, is not good for this album. However I don't hate the genre and I will go into that a little bit later on. But but I do know that Chris Barnes was the original vocalist to of course the legendary death metal band that is Cannibal Corpse who wrote such songs as Hammer Smashed Face and Shooting Blood from the Now, I don't hate death metal. In fact, I do enjoy some of the songs, but it is not a genre that I really go to often. So I'm coming at this, I guess, with fresh eyes, and I'm not going to jump on the hate train of Chris Barnes' vocals, but of course I will address them when the time comes. So let's get into this review for Six Feet Under. When it comes to death metal, I've always been of the understanding that the vocals are the most important part. And by most important part, I mean they should be screened in such a guttural way that you cannot understand the lyrics unless you have someone giving it to you in sign language. Yes, most of the death metal tracks I've ever heard always required subtitles, and for me that was just part and parcel of death metal. There are tracks on here that you can actually understand the lyrics, such as Neanderthal, but that's because they slow the pace right down. And of course, you know, it is very repetitive when he's shouting Neanderthal over and over again. Now that is one of the worst tracks on this album, unfortunately. But when you look at the very beginning of this album, there is this interesting song here called No Nothing Ingrate. And basically, this takes aim at every single critic out there in regards to Six Feet Under's music. Now, I want to play this small clip right here. I'm so glad that had the subtitles. But basically, this song is saying that if you don't agree with me, then you are wrong. Which is interesting, because I actually like this song, but you don't agree with me, so that creates a bit of a conundrum. Am I wrong in saying that I think this song is good? I mean, this is just odd. But I still have to say, I love this track. I think it's a fantastic opener, and you know, despite the fact that I'm not a massive fan of this genre, this song really got to me, and I love it. It's pumping me up. I love the riffs, solid hooks, amazing tune, fantastic. And this seems to flow on from the next couple of tracks with Accomplice to Evil Deeds, Ascension, and even When the Moon Goes Down. And all these songs I feel are really good. They work quite well. The guitar riffs are solid. The drumming is powerful as ever. I mean, the only thing that's let down by this entire album is the vocals. But it's not a big issue for me because I'm a groove junkie at the end of the day. I don't pay extreme attention to vocals when I'm listening to music. I'm all about the guitar riffs. I'm about that melody, the bass hooks, the drums. All that stuff speaks to me more than any kind of vocals can. So in essence, I'm probably the perfect person to review this album because I can ignore Chris's vocals. Now this being said, there still are a couple of tracks here that just don't work. The first one I can think of is Hostility Against Mankind, which is just this slow paced and rather boring kind of track. I think that it just really sets the tempos a bit odd, but you've got to try and change it up considering the songs that came before and the songs that will come after. When this album fires, and it does so fairly often, it's usually in short rapid fire succession. And that's where this album is most powerful. It's best suited to the band to just be short, precise, and just get down to business. And if killing is the business... There are some amazing songs here, as I've said, and when they are short and sweet, it's perfect. 
That being said, I just cannot go past Neanderthal again because it is like the ballad of the album. Well, at least by their standards anyway. But yeah, Neanderthal is a long song. It goes for way too long for the band and at least for me. Which, usually, I like prog rock. So I love long songs when it comes to albums. But when it came to this album, I did not want to hear any lengthy tunes. I just wanted short, sweet, and powerful. And for most of the part, this album seemed to be hitting the spot. This song, though got on my nerves. It's slow paced, it's too long, and it just disorientates the listener when you're going through it. For most of the rest of the album, it's plain and simple, just cut and dry, regular methods of course for when you come to death metal, and then you get to the last track, and yeah, Hair of the Dog. <laughs> Hair of the Dog was originally done by Nazareth, and this is a band from the 70s, and most of the original musicians are dead. However, I think they'd be rolling in their graves when they hear this song being played. It is a terrible cover, and by the original standards, I just don't understand why they picked this. Yes, of course the band may enjoy and be influenced by the likes of such musicians, but why? Why would you do this? Now I did hear the band's cover of TNT which originally was done by ACDC and I have to say it is very similar in vain to this. They keep it to their style and congratulations for not bending the knee and doing something different. However, your music is not suited for this 70s classic rock. It's a shite and terrible pairing that you should never make. Please, never do covers. The rest of this album, I don't mind. Even the songs that I said I just didn't like too much. But Hair of the Dog, woof. You give Limp Bizkit doing a cover of Behind Blue Eyes a run for its money for the worst cover ever done. Overall, I'm going to give this album a score of 5 million chilies on the spicy scale, with my favourite tracks being Know Nothing Ingrate, Ascension, and Fit of Carnage. Chris Barnes has a long history with internet feuds, and of course, maybe the hate is warranted towards his direction. That being said, I think it's up to you, the listener, to come up to your own decision in regards to this album. Go and listen to it. Decide for yourself if you love or hate this record, because I feel like it is going to be a very polarizing one. And of course, if you look at the rest of YouTube in regards to these reviews, you can understand that it is a very polarizing one. But I'm glad that you chose my channel to come and listen to hear me rant about this band that I know nothing about. Maybe I'm going to listen to a few more songs by them. Maybe direct me to another record of theirs that may be more suitable for my palate. I mean, at the end of the day, as I said, I do listen to a bit of death metal. Most of the stuff that I tend to listen to is more progressive based, such as Between the Buried and Me and Death. And I know that Death and Chris Barnes have their connection. However, I know Death was a very, very different band when it came to Cannibal Corpse and of course Six Feet Under. So that is why there is this weird disconnect. I just love the progressive elements of Death and Between the Buried and Me, these bands bringing in the elements of death metal, but not being over encumbered by the one dimensional species that is death metal. And that is where Six Feet Under falls under my radar for most of the time, because there is just no chance that you can do any variations. Still, it's an interesting album, I love the aggression, and I found it quite enjoyable. I am of course disregarding any vocals, but at the end of the day, they're always going to be there, aren't they? Because this is Chris's band. If you've enjoyed this content, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to us, and stay notified for future music-related content because it keeps our manager happy at the end of the day. We are also on Discord, Instagram, Facebook, and all those other social platforms if you want to check us out. As always, people, you have a great day and stay spicy.